So in this video we are going to create this environment in Blender. It's been a long time since I made my last video and this time I'm trying something different like try to speak along the video, try to explain my process and stuff like that. So let's try if it works out for you guys. Let's try this new video format. So this is the first part and it is going to include the modeling process and how I set up this uh, paint system add-on which I got from from some YouTube channel, I'll put the link in description. It's totally free and it is definitely one of the best ones out there if you want to paint your, your 3D models. So to model this environment, I got a bunch of reference images from Pinterest that I will be using to make this model. So before we begin, make sure you turn on this cavity option from the viewport shading. And now let's start modeling the scene. So I'm beginning here with the base part of this model and adding a few edge loops at the top to get the fine details going. And now let's add another cube to make the pillar. Like you see in the reference image, I'm going to add a bunch of edge loops by pressing Ctrl R and just scrolling with the mouse. And just scale these uh, edges to get the fine details. Make sure you are considerate of the relative sizes of these objects. And now I'm adding a mirror modifier to get the duplicates of the same pillar. Now let's add another cube to get the C curve like you see in the reference image. And to do that, I'm going to just add a bunch of edge loops by pressing Ctrl R and just scroll with your mouse. Make sure you get this uh, smooth C curve but also do not add a lot of edge loops because we want to keep it low poly. Now I'm connecting these edges by selecting them first and then connecting them by pressing F and just add a bunch of edge loops by pressing Ctrl R and select them and connect them by pressing F. Make sure you have this quad geometry going and you don't have any n-gons because that will be that would be a problematic because we are going to UV unwrap this later. So make sure you add these edge loops and just connect them by pressing F. Once you're done with the, with this with this object and it's a, it's all closed up, now I'm going to add another cube and going to place it in the middle. Just like you see in the reference image, it is going to just cover this uh, this whole place. And now let's add a cylinder to make the cylindrical pillars. Here I'm just extruding the top face and scaling it to get this fine details and scaling it in the Z direction to keep it to keep the right shape. And now to just duplicate the cylinder by pressing shift D and just move them around at the top in a circular in a circular shape. And now here I'm adding another cylinder to and trying to align it with the cylinders so that uh, it becomes this cone like shape like you see in the reference image adding a bunch of edge loops again to get the C curve going. So once you're done with the with this shape, here I'm adding a few more edge loops to and scaling it at the top to get these fine details again. And now let's just uh, duplicate this top edge and select all these vertices and extrude by pressing E and then scale in the Z direction by pressing 0 so that it collapses in the middle. So now once you have the model, the main part of the model ready, here I'm just extruding the, the bottom face to the down and adding a few more cubes to make these walls, like in the reference image. Here I'm just trying to insert these face by pressing I and scaling scaling them down and then extruding them inside these walls to make these uh, square like holes so that it looks more interesting and natural. Make sure you don't overdo it but at the same time 
try to keep it look try to make it look interesting so now as you see we have a lot of objects right now in the scene and also a lot of inconsistent names in the scene collection so I'm going to join these objects by just selecting the objects first and then right click and then select join make sure you have only a few objects this time here for this scene I'm going to just keep five objects like you see here we have a lot of triangles at the top so I just turned them into quads for better topology and now I'm going to name all these objects Now let's start UV unwrapping our models. To do that just select the object, go to edit mode and press A to select all the faces and then press U and select smart UV project and set an island margin value. For this scene I'm using 0.01 for all these objects and then select uh, the UV unwrap. Turn on this UV stretching option so that uh, you can see your UVs in color. If the UVs look blue then you can be sure that uh, they are not very stretched. A slight variation of blue is also not a problem but if the UVs look too much yellow or kind of green then that would indicate that the UVs are far too stretched and that is really not good and it would also also be problematic when you will be painting later on. So make sure that your UVs look kind of blue. Now let's add some light to our scene, go to the render view and make the strength to 5 units and also make the angle 0 degrees so that we have these crisp shadows. Try to play with the light and, and just see what you find interesting. You can also play with the world setting and, and play with the contrast between the shadow and the lights. This works fine for me, this works really good. So I'm going to keep this scene in wireframe while I'm painting because it really helps me out and another thing is it actually looks really good when, when you paint in wireframe. So I'm using this paint system add-on for painting this scene. You can get this add-on for free, I've put the link in description. You can also see how to set this up. So here I'm just setting up the image textures with this paint system add-on for all these objects separately. You can learn how to do this by watching this video in description or you can also just follow what I'm doing here. I'm just repeating the same process for all these objects. Now after setting up the paint system add-on now we can finally start painting and you can see that we can now start painting on the shadows as well as on the lights. So we already know the shadow areas and the light areas like with the top part of this model I'm going to use the yellow kind of color for this and for the light color I'm going with the, with the bright yellow and for some shadows I'm using this reddish kind of color. And the more darker the shadow is, I'm going to make the color even more darker, which means a more dark a reddish brown color. I'm not using any reference for how to paint this scene, I'm just uh, using these random colors. But I'm also keeping in mind that, uh, that we don't paint a shadow color on the light areas. Just make sure that you get the values right and, and just explore with the, explore and play with different colors. I'm mostly going to use blue, yellow and red, that would be my color palette for this scene. 
making sure that uh, we do not making sure that we get the values right like here I'm just I'm using blue so I'm making sure that I don't use this uh, dark blue on the light areas make sure you use the darker colors on the shadow areas and brighter color on the light areas so rest of this video is now just me painting the scene and in the next video I'm going to make the scene look more painterly with the different brush strokes and we will also be animating these clouds and uh, and the stars hand drawn with the help of grease pencil